Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Our topic today is about war and politics and the games of wars. Uh, all of us we knew the news about uh, the war in Armenia uh, between Azerbaijan and from one side Azerbaijan, Turkey and Muslim terrorists from Syria. They brought more than 4,000 terrorists from Syria and many of them they are actually uh, from the origin of Turkish. They call them Turkmen. Uh, to join the fight against Armenia. That became like a, a habit or let us say a pattern of behavior of Erdogan. He sent the same fighters almost, uh, but they were at that time, I mean in this time it was Syrian who they are Arab Syrian, not Turkmen. He sent them to Libya and they sent them to Africa and he sent them wherever he need because they are under his control. He is the one who is giving them refugee and he is the one who protect them from defeat. When Erdogan one day he shot an, an, uh, a Russian airplane, he apologized like a puppy and in order to make the Russian happy, he bought from them the 400 missiles, which is useless for him because he cannot even activate those missiles. Uh, I heard in the news a uh, few days ago that Erdogan he activated those missiles to try them when the NATO were practicing and the, the, the NATO uh, they were able to uh, detect such an action and then right away he ordered to turn them off because if the NATO knew that he is trying those missiles uh, uh, I mean, just to try the system, the radar, that would be a big problem for him. And already they knew. So he do not dare to use it. He cannot use it. Even the Russian will not let him use it unless it is inside Turkey. This is part of the agreement. Uh, so when somebody uh, like Erdogan, he play all those games. I mean, what does guy he want? You know, you try, you try to find a way uh, to find a reason I mean, what this person he want? He cannot go in war with Greece. We know that because war in Greece is not war with the Greece. It's war with, 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 with bigger than Greece. Uh, the economy of uh, Turkey is collapsing. The lira is dead. Salaries are dead. The same person who used to make the same salary last year, his salary is still the same, but his money cannot buy him a chicken. So what does guy he want? The answer is very simple. You see, uh, Erdogan, he learned since he became a president that he is the same as a hyena or let us say little puppy who tried to grab bones from those who have bones. And in order to get the bone, he had to annoy you. And this is what he was doing during the time, all the time with Europe. As an example, when the war in Syria happened, the refugee came, Erdogan, he took billions of dollars saying, if you don't want refugee to come to you, you have to pay me. So the refugee became a great income for him. You know, the, the Turkish, they claim that they have the refugee and they are the one who's taking care of them. The fact they suck their blood. All the refugees who came to Turkey is paid their food, their salary, their, their anything is paid by Europe. Billions and billions of dollars he received and all of it is not even given to the refugee. This is why you see the refugee in uh, the Syrian refugee in Turkey. Women, they became prostitute. Men, they became a missionary for fighting as he sent to, to fight. In. Why? Because they want to make living. Even he forced them to do that. And the one who have money, Erdogan, to take them forever from Syria, he offered them uh, citizenship. If you are a person who have more than, let us say, whatever money, uh, if you invest this money in Turkey, bring your money, we will give you citizenship. And in the same time, he stole all the equipment, all the manufacturer from the north of Syria. So he, you know, and his son and his son-in-law, they can be billionaires. So this is Erdogan, nothing new. And Erdogan now, he do the same in, you know, whatever, whatever a game he can play. The war in Azer Azerbaijan and Armenia will bring billions of dollars to Turkey because the Azerbaijanian they have to buy from Turkey. He is their protector, supposedly. So he sponsored this war, not because really he support those people, but because he want to take their money. I mean, he is, uh, uh, Azerbaijan have oil, 
and that oil now is going all for buying weapon and most of it is coming from Turkey some from Israel and some from China but what the accomplishment Erdogan is going to make he want to try to be a lit the little hero you know the little hero uh, I mean this this Erdogan he cannot go in war with anyone is big just last week if you remember when Erdogan he sent his uh, his uh, terrorist to Libya and uh, he want to invade the uh, Sirte etc and then the, the Egyptian they said to him Sirte is a red line you pass it you die the coward Erdogan he stand by since then he never passed a single centimeter because Egypt is a big country and almost they have more population than Turkey and they have a huge military too and they are arming themselves for the last 20 years so here there's like an let us say an equal war between two countries actually we cannot say equal I assure you that uh, Egypt will win any war with Turkey easy uh, so when you are a small country like Armenia 10 million people then Erdogan is a hero he is the little hero when you are a small country like Greece the same number you know he is a hero but when it's come to Russia when it's come to Egypt when it's come to any he is the little potato so in front of his people he's trying to get them money don't you want money we have to make money we don't have money we are bankrupt so always like you see now each time Erdogan he go like he go um, lose his mind because money economy is going really bad he have to do something so the European they will pay him do something you know I have to do something now I'm going to send you a ship to explore the Mediterranean I mean well, there is no gas there and he will never find gas and just wait in two weeks from now he will announce that he found more gas those propaganda always happen in the Middle East before elections or let us say to cool down the people we found gas you know this ha happened in Egypt happened in uh, uh, in Morocco happened everywhere those countries who where people are so upset there's no you know, economy is so bad the president or the king or etc he come from time to time and he told them we found a long line of gold 80,000 tons of gold okay where it is ah, never happened you know so those are just propaganda to make the people cool down in the same time in the time of war people are busy they forget about their hunger you know it's war when you when you are in war people support you because you are defending the country so war can accomplish many things even though war is not happening by the way I mean he is not even going for war I mean do this guy dare really to attack Greece he will not dare uh, because Greece is not Armenia you know Armenia is, is different Armenia have no friends even the Russian are not really friends Putin is a businessman doing business and they are alone they have no friend neighbors the Azerbaijani they are Shia Iran is Shia so like some Christian they thought they said oh Iran will help Armenia they are friends my friend those, those people are they have no friends Shia have no friends they are Shia and here you ask yourself a question how the Sunni Erdogan helping the Shia Azerbaijan doesn't make sense they are enemies you know what enemies mean I mean they are killing each other Erdogan is the one who is killing the Shia in Syria this is the same guy who is killing the Shia in Syria how the one who is killing the Shia in Syria is protecting the Shia if we can say the word protecting in Azerbaijan so this guy is a Shia this guy is a Sunni how they became in love that's impossible right what is possible is money this is money and what are and the people of Azerbaijan don't understand that if Turkey support you today they will sell you tomorrow those people have no friends they have no friends you see Erdogan he protect the Muslim Brotherhood but he himself he delivered Muslim Brotherhood to the Egyptian government in order to get their I mean like let us be nice together he can give them all up over one day if the Egyptian agree with him so this guy have no friends and this is how Turkey is not only him Turkey since you know since it's the beginning of their history you know you go back to Jan Khan and you know the 
you know, Tatar, the, or like, uh, the war, and they have no friends. I mean, they shake hands with you today, they cut your hand tomorrow. So, uh, Erdogan, he is taking advantage of those poor Azerbaijani. They have a problem with the Armenian. The Armenian claim this is their land. The Azerbaijani, they claim this is our land. And the fact is, all the land of both countries belong to Armenia. Azerbaijan, all of it, and Turkey, all of it. Half of Turkey belong to Armenia, and the other half belong either to Syria or to Greece. When we say Syria, we're not talking about the Muslim Syria. You know what I'm talking about. So, the truth is very clear. And it's a dirty game. And what Erdogan, he want to accomplish before the election, he want to make things hot. So, people vote for him. In wartime, you know, people, they stand behind their president. As simple as that. So creating a creating a war, even if the war is not really real war. I mean, until now, what war Erdogan is really involved in? Zero. He is using others to fight, and he is watching from behind. Yet he claimed that he is the one standing for the enemies. But yet he don't dare to attack any of the enemies. He don't even dare to say, I'm fighting you in Azerbaijan. Uh... Somebody saying something. Let us read the. I'm not going to stay here for long because I have some work to do. Dude, they are racist. Both are Turks. Not money, but race. Yeah, race. No, racist. The race is the is the game they play to encourage people to fight. But money, money, my friend. Those we are talking about the leaders. We are not talking about the people. People are naive. You know, people put put something for them in TV. You know, say to them Allahu Akbar. They go crazy. You know, and people are naive. Those are not the one. Who create a war the one who created the war did you ask yourself why they are promoting racism in their tv stations in both in turkey and in azerbaijan for this moment you know like but most of us we think about things as we see right away things have roots you know you don't look at the grass in the top look at the roots you cut the grass the root you know is there the grass will come back so there's a root and the root is, we cannot survive, those people, this is how they think, we cannot survive, we cannot control those people unless we create an enemy. Always you have to create an enemy. You see, what is the problem if Iran sign a peace agreement with Israel? Iran have no borders with Israel. They will never go in war with Israel. They will not dare even to attack Israel. But every day, death to America, death to Israel, death to America, okay, and what, what people are dying. Yeah, they, you have to create an enemy in order for your government, which is dictatorship, filthy government, stay. So people cannot complain. Why we cannot have food? Because we have uh, death to America. We have death to Israel. You know, Erdogan is the same. Anytime you see the economy going bad in Turkey, so bad, you will see Erdogan, he's creating a problem. Creating a problem abroad. So the problem inside will be forgotten as simple as that uh, always there is a plan for things things doesn't happen right away you know and the war in armenia obviously the azerbaijani and the turkish they're preparing for it for more than maybe two or, or three years and they took obviously the armenian into surprise you know they were not ready for this and this is why we say, if you are a small country, never trust a friend to defend yourself. Trust yourself. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself for the war so you can have peace. The only way to guarantee peace in your land is to be ready for war. A country is not ready for war, he will not have peace. Because the evil one is exist. You know, many people don't believe in evil one and then the evil one come to them. Evil ones are exist. They are real. And they will take advantage of you. You know, uh, two days ago, I was uh, no, talking to a friend. And I told them, I'm going to renew my guns license. Uh, guns? Why, why, uh, guns? Why do you need guns, you know? So why, why, why not? Why you don't have guns? What's wrong with having guns? What the problem? Christians, in their mentality, they have... Like, okay, we are people who believe in peace. Jesus, he says, love your enemy, etc. My friend Jesus himself, he said, the one who doesn't have a sword, go and buy one. He don't want you to kill people, but you can defend yourself. 
They read all the Bible, don't see that verse. They don't even heard of it. So you having a weapon will make the one who is an enemy think twice before he attack you. But you have no one, but they can slaughter you like a sheep. So, especially those small countries, you have to arm yourself very well. Like, if you ask yourself, what is stopping the enemies of Israel from demolishing Israel? Be honest with yourself. Don't you think they wish they can demolish Israel in two seconds? In one second? They, they will, if they can. What is stopping them from doing it, that Israel is very powerful. So Armenia, in order to survive, have to be more powerful than Israel. And I believe Armenia can do that. Because many of you maybe do not know Armenian. Armenia are very intelligent people. Actually, most of the Soviet Union weapon is made by Armenian people. Most of airplanes of Putin is made by Armenian people. So why you want to make it for Putin? You don't make it for yourself. And then you will see no enemy is around you. They, they will disappear. The enemy appear when you are weak. Because they want to take advantage of you, of your weakness. Simply your weakness. Armenian, they have additional power. They are spread around the world. Huge number of Armenian. Why? Because of genocide of Erdogan and his country. When they start killing, slaughtering Armenian by millions, Armenians scattered around the world. And that now is for their benefit. So now they have a lot of power and a lot of, uh, let us say, they can create a lot of pressure in the international community. Good for you. Why you don't make a lobby? Why Armenian don't make a lobby to protect the Armenian people in Armenia? Why the Israeli can't do that? You cannot do that. What's wrong? So we have, you know, we have to be uh, clear about this. This war will never end for the benefit of Azerbaijan. Maybe they think now they, they took some villages. After all this war, after all the support, they are, they are getting weapon from Israel, the most high-tech weapon from Israel. Israel said they don't care. Hmm? And this is why, some, if you remember, many, a long time ago, I said Netanyahu is a filthy man. And he said, uh, you know, they said to me, Azerbaijan is a, is a is what? Is a, uh, they are not religious. They are what? Like atheists. I don't know what they said. I, I forgot what the word. I said to them, well, you're stupid. People are stupid. You know, what are you talking about? What atheists? Those are Muslims are Muslims. Do you see how the Muslims supporting? Azerbaijan in every chat, in every Twitter, Allahu Akbar. The second you post a video, they are killing an Armenian soldier. Arab, Afghanistan, all of them. Suddenly nobody remembered that Azerbaijani, they don't care really for religion. They care that they are Muslim by name. That's it. So it's very silly to say as Israel, just to defend Israel, you know, like Israel, Israel is not doing, you know, there's many Christians, they love to defend Israel. It doesn't matter what is the Israeli prime minister he do, even if he's a donkey. This guy, Netanyahu, he is the most filthy prime minister for Israel ever happened. And this is the truth. Which is very weird that Israel, Turkey are enemies. Both are supporting Azerbaijan in the war against Armenia. I mean, why, how that can work? Because both of them, they don't have a belief to support. They have business. Erdogan the Sunni, who hate the Shia, who killed them in Syria, supporting the Shia in Azerbaijan. Does it make sense? What makes sense is money. Azerbaijan have a lot of oil. And because of this oil, we need it. We need money. Turkey is collapsing. Economy is dead. There's no jobs. Creating a war, telling those people, hey, go to war. We give you a weapon. We will support you. We will stand with you. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't see it. Don't see fire. Because if they see fire, they want to buy more. The more the weapon, the more weapon is used, the more money they make. 
All right. So the war is for the benefit of Erdogan, but this little hero, he is no hero because this is not his war and he is not fighting by his soldiers and he, even the coward he is hiring. Guys, imagine what he is doing. The Azerbaijani government, they pay Erdogan for every soldier about $8,000. Erdogan, he pay the Syrian fighters 1,500 to 2,000 maximum. So he make to his pocket 6,000 from every soldier a month. So Erdogan became a recruiting agency for terrorists. And actually this is what they were doing. Erdogan just yesterday or two days ago, he went to Qatar. Why he need to go to Qatar? I mean, Qatar is a small, tiny country. Have you ever heard of a big country like Turkey visiting a small, tiny country? You cannot even see in the map. Qatar is not even the size of, of, a, of a farm. Why you are going there? Because Qatar is the money. All right? Uh, money is the game. Many, the naive ones, they think Erdogan, he care for religion. You see, Erdogan, he was upset from Emirat. Let us, let us find the news. I'm not planning to stay long, by the way. But you know, Christian Prince, when it is his video is short, you know how short it is. Uh, Erdogan was so upset from Emirat for signing peace agreement with uh, Israel. Let us find the news. You will find, he said, that it's a treason. He said, let me find it. It is a treason. What is a treason? It's a treason to sign peace agreement with Israel. Look at this coward. This coward, the Israeli flag is flying in the middle of his capital. So why you have yourself, if it's a treason? If it's a treason for them to open an embassy in Emirat, why you have an embassy of Israel in Ankara? You have a consulate in Istanbul. Why you have ones? It's not a treason. The reason Erdogan, he don't care really for those Palestinian and you know, he don't care. This guy is a fraud. What he care for, now he lost his job as the only one from the Muslim countries who have relationship with Israel. Do you know the real estate agent business? What real estate agent is business? He's an agent. He don't own the property. In order to, to talk to the owner, you don't know the owner. You cannot talk to the owner. You have to talk to the agent. So Erdogan... He wanted to be the only agent who betrayed the Arab and the Palestinian, if we can call them Palestinian. He wanna he wanna have exclusive license for the business. So when uh, those Arab countries start signing peace agreement with Israel, well, now the Israel you do not need Erdogan. They can go and hey, hello, Prime Minister of Emirat, how are you? We have a problem. Hello? The Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia? Oh, how are you? Erdogan, he lost his job and lost the money and lost all the business can come from this business. So this coward, he is absolutely false. He don't want them to do, and if they do something, they call them treason, but he is the one, the first one who do it. In case you do not know, there is a, there is a war agreement with Israel. There is weapon agreement with Israel. There is intelligence center for the Mossad in Turkey, in the middle of Turkey. There is teachers who teach Turkish about using weapon and making weapon and even intelligence. Turkish officers, they take a train under the command of Israeli officer, all of this. And those who sign peace agreement with Israel, they are doing treason. So many of the naive Muslims, they think that Erdogan is a good guy. He is the caliphate. 
the guy he did not even close one night club in Turkey since he became president for how many years he is a president just a year ago when they asked him how come you don't close the night club his mufti the, the minister of Islam in Turkey he said if we close them who will pay for your salary which is the truth Turkey there's no economy Turkish product is horrible if you buy a t-shirt from Turkey you wash it bye bye one time wash is gone what they have Turkey now trying to promote itself that it's making weapon but all of us we know that Turkish weapon is not a Turkish weapon it's just a collection of uh, parts but they put it together some is coming from China some coming from Israel some coming from Russia we put them together and we claim that this is a Turkish airplane and then we take it to Azerbaijan and we use it and then we throw bombs and then the bombs don't explode 60% of the bombs thrown in, 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 uh, in uh, uh, over Armenian uh, force they don't explode they are made in Turkey you buy a gun made in Turkey it's highly possible that you will shoot yourself because it's going to explode this is why if you if you have a Turkish gun you have to put the gun far away from your head because it might explode and in, in the best scenario you might lose a finger so Erdogan is doing his best and the best of a, a person who is a fraud this is the best of a fraud person so when we say the best we cannot expect from the best of a fraud to be something good so it's not good for you to have a relationship with, with Israel but it's good for him he recite Quran he want to take Hagia Sophia just to win the election you know to tell them look you know I'm doing something so okay you take Hagia Sophia we will have it back just wait after the election the new president he will say this is stupid this is bad you know people are laughing at us bring it back and even we will have it as a church just wait it's just a matter of time so all of this is temporary and we know it's temporary and there's a new change is going to happen soon I believe very soon Iran is collapsing thanks to Trump Iran is totally collapsing so the regime of Iran you see we don't want the Iranian people to get hurt but sometime uh, there is I mean you cannot you cannot collapse the regime without people of Iran get hurt Iran and Turkey both of them their currency is dead I'm going to search in Google for both give me a second okay this is Iran currency you can do the same actually in your Google Prophet Google piece up on him and you can search same for Turkish currency you will see it's the same both countries are diving deep and their currency is dead This is the news about Turkey. You can choose the, the, the most recent one and see the Turkish, uh, you know, uh, lira. Same for Iran. The currency of Iran is failing, free failing, which means there's no control. If a Trump won the election in a few weeks from now, the government of Iran is gone. I assure you that without war this is why this guy is a genius every president before him war 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 this guy he is going to make them pay collapse without war because when people get hungry there's no government will stay it doesn't matter how powerful it is nobody can stop the hunger of a human being people stay home as long as they have some food in the table but when parents they see their children having no food in the table no jobs no money and the country is rich who is going to be blamed the government 
So if Trump won the election, Iran, the government of Iran, we don't we don't want the Iranian to be dead. Actually, actually, I assure you that the new Iran will be an anti-Islamic religion Iran. Iranian are very, very, very anti-Islam, actually. The one who is holding Iran as Islamic from outside. You see, this Iran is a big balloon, Islamic balloon from outside. Inside, nobody is Islamic. Inside, nobody is Islamic. This is why you will not find one single Iranian who go abroad wear a hijab. In Iran, they wear a hijab. Even in, even in Iran, you walk in Iran, you will find the women, she's showing half of her head, which means I don't, you know, I, I mean forced to wear it. So, Turkey economy is collapsing. Iran economy is collapsing. And a new change will happen in the area. Big change. United Arab Emirates signed peace agreement. Bahrain side you know sign peace agreement Sudan very soon will sign peace agreement the king of Saudi Arabia will sign a peace agreement and then the rest will follow what that will do Turkey position is over nobody need Turkey no more for the last 60 70 years the only one who is between America and let's say the Israeli and the Arab it was Turkey they want to negotiate something they go to Turkey. Turkey called the Arab. The Israeli already in Turkey. Let us negotiate. Anything, anything. It doesn't matter what, how big, how small. That is gone. That is history now. You know, if you remember, I made a video about... I know, I know that Turkish... Uh, sorry, Iranian leaving Islam. I know. I told you once, if you remember, once I, I saw a big, big, big festival and they have like Arabic words writing. And a lot of people, like, I don't know, 20,000 in the park. Maybe more than 20,000. So I said, all of those are Muslims? Wow, that's a lot. So I stopped my car and I went to see what is inside. And then the first boost I saw, it's like they have tents, they have books. It was the Bible. I said to him, uh, you know, hello. He answered in English for sure, you know. And I look at the Bible, you know, it says Bible in outside, and it says in Arabic, I don't, you know, I, you, you know, that's, I speak Arabic, right? So Iranian, they use Arabic font. And many of their words actually is coming from Arabic. So I can read it, you know? So it's the Bible. So all this festival was ex-Muslims. More than 20,000 people in the park, in USA, none of them is a Christian by birth. All of them, they are Iranian convert from Islam to Christianity. Praise the Lord. So things will change. And when things change, things will not be good for many. USA under Trump is in the process of moving our troops from Turkish land. And they are doing it slowly because they don't want what happened in Iran. If you remember when the Shahi, you know, collapsed, the Iranian, they took hostages. So the American, they are now moving, or let us say, uh, sneaking out. They are moving their troops to Crete in Greece. So the interest of USA in Turkey is over. Turkey is not the one they want anymore. It's a troublemaking country, fraud, no friendship. You cannot trust president of Turkey. You cannot trust the government of Turkey. And American, they knew that at the end of the day, they hate them. So why would I give them billions of dollars? Big income coming to Turkey because of our troops. So Trump, as we speak now, is moving all the, the nukes and the missiles, which is very strategic from Turkey to Greek and that will make a new balance too because now Greece is important to USA not Turkey for Greek or, or Crete the island of Crete is Greece so having actually this is a very smart move from you know from the Greek people to bring the American at the same time uh, will bring a lot of income 
and America never do anything bad in your land. I mean, they don't do anything. Here we go. They are in Turkey. They are in Seoul. They are in Japan. They are etc. Wherever they go, they spend a lot of money, and you are the you are the winner. In the same time, you lose nothing. Japan, which is a very powerful country, if we can talk about economy, yet they insist that the American they stay in their land. Why? Because they knew how important it is for them for their security. Germany, which is a super country, I mean, imagine Germany was on the almost controlled the whole world. They get so upset when Trump he said we are moving our troops to Poland because they don't feel secure without USA. So the existence of USA mean a lot in those countries, and that making Erdogan go more crazy. And he knew that his days are numbered the election is coming if he did not do anything soon next week Erdogan he will come on TV says we discover more gas hmm, where is the gas uh, after the election I will show it to you few weeks after you know I mean this is what he would do until the election happened we discover gold we discover gas we discover etc and so people they cool down oh start dreaming you know oh he discover gas tomorrow I'm going to dry uh, like uh, drive an uh, expensive car, you know, the Turkish guy dreaming. Tomorrow I'm going to buy chicken. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to eat shish kebab, brother. Allahu Akbar. Yeah. So he drugged them with false discoveries in order to control them. You know what I mean? But all of this is a change. So if if somebody think that Armenian now they are losing war. My friend, this is a war. You see that the Roman, they have a war with the Persian. Anyone remember for how many years? How many years? The, the last war between the Roman and the Persian. I'm not too much good in history, but I think more than 300 years. The last war. Just the last one. And then the Romania became victorious. 300 years. And history speak that those who have intelligence, they will win. And I trust that I never saw, and I'm just being honest with you, I never saw smart people, especially when it's come to machines, especially when it's come to technique, mechanic. I never saw smart people like the Armenian. If you go and check right now, how many weapons in the Soviet Union or now in Russia is made by Armenian? You will not believe it. So if you take them, if you take them, let's say I don't like this president in Armenia now. I believe he is the one behind all of this because he's been stupid. He did not prepare himself and he did not take into consideration all. I mean, the news is all over. Everybody knows that they are buying weapons buying drones why you don't why don't prepare yourself he was sleeping he thought he signed an agreement with russia that would protect him stupid that's why the previous president was a was a was a very good guy very important for nations to have a leader strong leader stupid leader will make your country collapse so i believe that the armenian they will never lose after all this time support from turkey from iran from all the enemy of Armenia, they got a few villages. Well, the same you took them, they take them back. You take them from the Armenian today, Armenian they will take them tomorrow. They will never have victory. And that is a must. Because this is their land, and they are, you know, the propaganda of the Azerbaijani people, that they took our land, this is part of, this is not your land, all of Azerbaijan is Armenia. All of Turkey is not Turkish. When, when you go and you brag about, oh, the Armenian, they make, they put, uh, they put uh, pigs in the mosque. Hmm? What you did in our churches. Just two weeks ago, your faithy Erdogan, he took our church, he make it a mosque. How the churches exist there? The answer is very simple. You are in occupation, taking our land. And the filthy, imagine guys, Erdogan speaking about occupation. The one who is all his country is occupation. All his country, not a single inch of what it's called Turkey today is Turkish. 
He talk about Israeli occupation. He talk about uh, uh, Armenian. Ex I mean, everybody is occupation for him, except him. And this is the truth. So I'm not really too much worry about Armenian tomorrow. I'm worried about Armenian today because obviously they've been taken into surprise. And I hope the Armenian, they will get enough support. And me, myself, I ask every one of you, if you cannot support them by donation, like to, to, to help the poor ones who they are leaving their villages, you know, I mean, we should do that. You know, there's many churches, Armenian churches, they are doing collecting donation. Please help them send donation for the poor villagers who lost their houses and you know prayer is good but prayer alone is not enough right prayer alone is is, is just a weak uh, response uh, so support them help them if you can do whatever you can do you know and in the same time i say to the armenian never give up the second you give up the second you lost it's not the second you lost a village you lost no the second you lost your faith, you lost, you know, your consistent, like let's say, your belief that you are going to have your land back and nobody will take it from you. You believe that you have the right to survive and genocide will never happen again. This is what you need. Uh, Why Iran is against Azerbaijan? Who said to you Iran is against Azerbaijan? Nobody. This is this is a, this is the biggest lie ever. Azerbaijan is Shia. Iran is Shia. The pri the president of Iran he said from the first day Iranian must leave. This is all is a false propaganda. Let me show it to you in the news. Many people they don't you know, I don't know what people people say. People they say things I don't know what they can you know they think Iran will help Iran will help the Armenian yeah uh, good luck with that. All right. Uh, let us see in the news. Let's show you what the Iranian government said. Shia, Shia, my friend, Azerbaijan is Shia. Shia, they cannot support someone fighting Shia. Uh, anyway, you can you can search it, and you know this is what happened to the Armenian, by the way. They thought they have a friends in the borders, but this is foolish. You don't have a friends. You don't have friends. Never, never trust that you have a friends, especially when it's come to war and peace. Never. You can go right now and search in the news and you will find how the Iranian announced clearly that uh, Armenia should leave their land. They should leave. This is what the Iranian government said clearly. For a very simple reason, the Azerbaijani people, they are Shia. They are not only Muslims, they are Shia. Remember, Islam, Iran is a Shia state. Iran actually spent billions of dollars to spend the Shia sect between Muslims. So you want me now to believe that the Shia who support spreading Shia in order to conquer the Middle East by Shiaism, support you, Armenian, against their Shia? You must be crazy.
to believe in such a thing. Don't fool yourself, my friend. Don't fool yourself. Anyway, uh, Erdogan is going to collapse no matter what he do. All those things he's going with, the, you know, doing with the Greece, etc., making people disgusted from Turkey. Turkish is losing ground. Even Turkish people are upset from him because he is not do, he's doing no good to Turkey. You might make some money temporarily for Turkey, but you are losing the big money actually. But because this guy, all what he care is winning today election, and who care about tomorrow? He's trying to win today, and then tomorrow, let tomorrow come. So, all of Europe now, actually, I'm very thankful for existence of Erdogan. Let me explain to you why. If not Erdogan, maybe by now, Turkey will be part of European Union. Because those stupid Europeans, sadly, and when I say stupid European, I mean the government, they were thinking seriously to make Turkey join European Union. If that happened, Europe is over. But because of the existence of Erdogan, Turkey have no place of Europe. If, actually, if you ask me, I hope Erdogan will be a president to Turkey for the coming 200 years, if we can extend his life. Because Erdogan, he is the one who convinced the European that Turkish, the Ottoman, is the same as Turkish today. Nothing changed. They want to occupy your land. They want to take your money. They want to enslave your women, as what happened in the time of the Sultan. This is the modern sultan. He's trying to do that. He made he made a house for himself of 360 rooms. I mean, why in the world would somebody want to make a house have 360 rooms? Sick. His country is collapsing. There's no money. There's no jobs. Who needs such a palace? But because he wants to be the sultan. So he's, he's being annoying to Greece, but he will never dare to attack Greece. So what is the purpose of the anointment? So the European, they will give him some bones. Okay, we'll give you some bread. You want some? We we'll give you two billion. Just go now. Okay, come back tomorrow. So he take the two billions. When he finished spending them, he come back. It's like a puppy. So European now they understand very well that Turkey will never be what they thought. They were convinced, actually, almost convinced that Turkey became atheist. At the Turk. He forbid the Quran, he forbid Islam, etc. because he was a smart. And they thought it's over. No, it's not over. It's not. There's a big number of Turkish people, they don't care for Islam. This is absolutely true. They are atheists. They hate actually Islam. This is true. This is what we saw in Istanbul when or Constantinia, when when they were when the the women they have a prostration in the street, and then the Adan of the mosque started Allahu Akbar. The women they start whistling and making fun of it and Erdogan he insult them he called them whores so those countries are going to be you know they will change everything will be changing all right now uh, we don't want war this war is not for the benefit of Azerbaijan poor people are being killed from both sides the one who they are making the money is happy and the poor people making the payment. There's only one side of the story is sad, the people. Always the normal people is the one who pay. The rich ones are, you know, Erdogan's son and his son-in-law, they control all the oil business of Turkey weapon deals, making billions. This guy was a very poor person, supposedly. Where the, million, where, where the money coming from? Time will come and Erdogan will be taken to court, him and his family, just wait. And then people will see. A uh, few weeks from now, we will see an, uh, an election and we will see what will happen in this election. Mostly, I believe, mostly Trump will win, but you never know. 
in America, American people are TV station people. Play some commercial for them, you can convince them in something. Uh, so, the future is very dark for those who they are evil. They will never succeed. I'm not really worried about it. If anyone have a comment, you agree, you don't agree, you can leave it in the section. I know if you are a person who support Azerbaijan, you are a Muslim, I understand. But trust me, you will never win a war for many reasons. History talk. You see, uh, uh, sometimes Muslims, they dream about the old days. They say, in the old days, we, uh, you know, we, took, uh, we took this and we took that. There was reasons for those days. The Roman, they were fighting the Persian for more than 300 years. This is just the last war. As otherwise, this was more than a thousand years actually war. But both are exhausted. Now, you are the only one is exhausted. You have a lack of technology. You have a lack of resource. Many people think that Islamic countries are rich. They are not. Those who are rich are the small, tiny ones. Even Saudi Arabia is not rich no more. You see, People who do not know Saudi Arabia, in Saudi Arabia, until now, there's streets, they don't have syphilis in the ground. In Saudi Arabia, the most advanced cities don't even have a sewage. Mecca itself is being flooded by little rain almost every year. So, when we speak about war, who are you to win a war with who? Can Turkey win a war with anyone? No. Too small, not as a size, too small as a power. War need money, need resource, need weapon, and you don't have any of those. And if Turkey have some weapon now, those are toys. Those are toys for the others. What the Turkish now they have, like they have now drone. With the American, they have a drone since before before Erdogan was. He must, I mean, he was playing a, a as a as a captain in the football team. So those are toys for others. They are they are they are history. They are and what what you have now is nothing compared to others. So the one who have real weapon are the one is controlling the game, and we knew who they are. If Erdogan uh, have really a real army or real weapon and or, or manufacture, why you buy? Why you are desperate to buy the F-35 from the American? Why your airplane, all of them now, as F-16? Where's your airplane? Why you are buying the Russian weapon? A country who have manu manufacture of weapon, they will not need to buy weapon. Why? Why are you buying weapon? Because simply, you cannot make them. What you make is toys. They don't count. Those toys can do a lot of action with a war with a small country like Armenia. But they cannot do real action with those who make the toys and they sold them to you. Which side is Russia? Well, Russia supposedly should be in the side of Armenia, but obviously Putin is playing a dirty game. He's a businessman, you know this guy. I, I actually I, I like this person for he do what is right for his country. But I don't like his response what happened in Armenia. And I this is why I say to the Armenian, if I am them. The Russian, they should learn a lesson today that you don't support us, we will not support you, get out. The Armenian, they should put a pressure as soon as this thing, ha you know, finish to ask the Russian to leave their land because you fail. Otherwise, you have to change your rules. Next time somebody attack us, you stand with us. Otherwise, why we are we giving you a base here? Why we sign agreement with you? Why we are giving you our scientist? So Erdogan, he he's a, he's a smart person. We have to admit, he made the Russian connected very much with Turkey. A lot of weapon deals he buy from, he bought from the Russian billions and billions and billions of dollars, and Putin will not lose this money. Not for the sake of anyone. Same time, Turkey is the, the is the is the window of a fraud. What does that mean? If we go in the map. Let us show you the map.
All right. So if we look here in the map, you will find how, you know, Turkey find itself the window of the fraud. When I say fraud, doing everything which is not legal. Iran have sanction. Iran have sanction. How they can buy their stuff? From who? Which neighbor is the one who is sending their stuff, the one they need illegally? Turkey. As simple as that. Turkey always known for a fraud land. Anything illegal can be done in Turkey. So Iranian, they have a great, uh, uh, let us say, need of Turkey borders. For this is the only place where all their stuff coming from illegally. They sell their oil to Turkish, illegal. You know, they exchange product illegally and Turkey is the one who is doing that. Russia. European, because they are, you know, they do stupid stuff. They keep insisting to put, uh, let us say, sanctions on Russia. Then the Russian, they find that the best place to exchange their business, or let us say, uh, illegal business, because it's against the sanction. When I say illegal, it doesn't mean really it's illegal. I mean, it's uh, because there's sanctions. So it's illegal to, according to the sanctions uh, or those who put the sanctions. So then how the Russian, they can have their window of things they cannot buy from the market because there's sanctions in Turkey. Very easy. The Turkish are the easiest one. Very simple. ISIS, they want to sell their oil, the one they stole from Syria. How they can sell it? To who? Turkey. So all the fraud, anything is illegal. You want to do it? You go to Turkey. You know what I mean? And this is how the Turkish country is surviving right now. From the disasters of others. When others have disasters, Turkish get the benefit because they became the window, the market. Uh, Erdogan, because he is really, he did a lot of stupid things. He lost his economy with Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia became an enemy to him. So now, I think Saudi Arabia was number six as a country buying from Turkey. Imagine, number six. But by, because of his stupidity, uh, the Saudi, now they consider Turkey as an enemy country. So now there is no trade business between Turkey and Saudi Arabia. Same between Turkey and Egypt. They became enemies. Same between Turkey and Emirat, they became enemies, etc. So all those countries, they became enemies. And now if Iran government collapse because of a Trump sanction, Turkey is bankrupt. Who is the one buying and selling? Azerbaijan is a small country, cannot feed Turkish. For how long the Prince of Qatar can pay money and send money to Turkey? Not much. Turkey is a big country, have almost a hundred million population, and the billions of Qatar will not really make Turkey live forever. There's a limit. So things is changing and it's not for the benefit of Turkey. When the Turkish, they have a dream before in Syria, uh, here, the dream was by the help of Obama. Obama plan was very simple. Actually, if you, if any one of you did read the email which released by Trump about, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood, right? The 
Muslim Brotherhood, they have a dream to accomplish the Caliphate. And in order to establish the Caliphate, they can't do it by themselves. Obama was going to help them. So when Trump, he published the emails uh, of Hillary Clinton, you can go read it. You will see the plan was so clear. They want to establish an Islamic state by the Muslim Brotherhood. And the Caliphate, or let's say the leader of this state, is going to be Erdogan. So when the Russian came to, to, to Syria, they destroyed all the dream of Obama. When the Egyptian people, they refused the, the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt and they took over, the dream of Obama disappeared. This is why you see when, when they took off the, the Muslim Brotherhood president, his name is Morsi, uh, the first one who gave warning to Egypt, it was Obama. He warned them, he would put sanction on them, put the president back. Why? Because he is a Muslim Brotherhood. So the plan is we will make Muslim Brotherhood in Libya. This is why Hillary Clinton, she met with only one person from Libya, was the Muslim Brotherhood leader. Same in Syria, they want to take off the Assad, which is a dictator, and they want to replace him with Muslim Brotherhood. And already the Muslim Brotherhood taken over Turkey by Erdogan. And the plan was, next after we will take over Saudi Arabia, and we make Muslim Brotherhood take over it. Qatar already, Muslim Brotherhood. And we will take over Emirat, make it Muslim Brotherhood. And that's it. We control the country. Oh, I forgot. Uh, I forgot Tunisia. Tunisia already is under the Muslim Brotherhood. So look at this. By doing this, they controlled the biggest territory in the Middle East, and a lot of resource of oil, the oil of Saudi Arabia, Libya, even Egypt have gas, Emirat, Bahrain, etc. So, and Jordan, by the way, was next too, because Jordan have a huge number of Muslim Brotherhood. So the connection will be a big, huge state run by Erdogan. He will announce himself the Caliphate. After all those government became Muslim Brotherhood, they will meet together, the president, and they will announce that we are going to be a one unit state and our Caliphate is going to be Erdogan. So the state will be from here, you know, from here all the way taking over the Gulf Egypt Libya look how huge you know all the way to Tunisia and getting ready to expand later but this is the first start then the Russian came and Putin he destroyed the dream of Erdogan so he took Syria from him he destroyed all his terrorists in Syria so Syria, dream collapse. Then the Saudi Arabia, they discovered that the Muslim Brotherhood trying to take over. So Saudi Arabia start arresting Muslim Brotherhood and became number one target for them. So Saudi Arabia is out of the map. They lost the dream. And Emirat discovered in the same time that there is a plot from the Muslim Brotherhood to take over their country. So they did the same. And then Egypt, they took over their government and they throw out the president of the Muslim Brotherhood so Egypt is gone from the dream and then the Saudi and the Egyptian they support an old general from the army of Al-Qazafi so he took most of Libya and now the dream of Muslim Brotherhood in Libya it still exists but it's half let us say half exists so the dream disappear The dream disappear, right? <clears throat> anyway, uh, people in the chat they use names of others. Please don't use names of others because people will be confused between you and those people. All right, change the name you use. Don't use the name of somebody because people will be confused who you are. If you don't use it, we will hide you from the text. Okay? Don't use the name of uh, a Muslim or a Christian because this is not honest. I mean, you can make uh, a million names. All right? Uh, so anyway, 
For me, I believe that the existence of Erdogan is very helpful. Actually, I believe he's a gift for us as a Christian to see the truth. You see, the hard part we have to expose to you what Islam is about is to having someone is a sneaky. You know what I mean? Someone he don't say it as it is. Someone he lied to us. He practiced taqiyya. Islam is peace. But someone he practiced Islam is the best to explain Islam. Erdogan he is practicing that. And now European they notice clearly that Turkey cannot be part of European Union. It's a big dangerous country to join us. They don't have the same value. They don't believe in democracy. There's tens of thousands of people that are arrested in Turkey as we speak just for saying statements. TV stations are closed. Journalists are in jail. Judges, teachers, even post office man, he is in jail. So why in the world? You will let them join European Union. So let us say Erdogan is the one who saved European Union. All right. Uh, Go, I change my pants. Uh, Abbas, don't remind me of the hadith about your prophet changing his pants because he was leaking. Look who is talking about changing the pants. A guy who follow a prophet who dogs used to go around the mosque, inside the mosque, and they piss and he never ordered them to, pull water, to, to put water in the top of it. Are you going to change your mosque now or your pant? Because it looks like your pant is more clean, more clean than your mosque. I used to sleep in the mosque in the lifetime of Allah Messenger, and when I was young and the bachelor, the dog would, would urinate frequently, visit the mosque, and no one would spring water over it. <laughs> this is your leader. I mean, imagine Muhammad in the mosque and the dogs are pissing in the mosque and they come and they go frequently pissing, urinating. Look like the mosque became a mark of urine of dogs. And not a single Abbas, he take off his panty to wipe the floor. Are you happy, Abbas? Why you brought this to your prophet? Hmm? And by the way, this is Sahih. Because you know them, they will say, this is Daif. This is Daif, brother. This is Daif. Anything they don't like is Daif. Their religion is Daif. Their prophet is Daif. Their Quran is Daif. Everything is Daif. All right? This is Islam. And this is Erdogan. Erdogan is like a dog who urine around to annoy you. Pay me, I will not urine in your wall. This is what he do with Europe. If you don't mind just to see it smell my urine, pay me, okay? If you pay me, I will go for some time and I will come back later. <laughs> this is the truth. So, uh, I feel sorry for you, Abbas. Anyway, guys, I want to say thank you for being here. Actually, I wasn't planning to stay for long, but eh, what we can do. Yeah, this is a short video of mine as usual. And because we did not announce in advance that we will be here, so we don't have too many people here. No, Abbas is a good entertainment. I like Abbas. I wish I can grow Abbas in my yard, but the city will not allow me. You know, they said no chicken. You know, what we can do. Anyway, guys, I want to say thank you for being here. And again, if you can support the Armenian people, support them. They are those people, they suffer a lot. Genocide, killing, humiliating, raping their women, taking their property. And now Erdogan, the filthy Erdogan, he's trying to do the same, to use them as a bait, actually, to make some money. He have no dignity. So thank you for being here. May the Lord bless may the Lord bless you all. And until we see you soon again, we say Christ is Lord and uh, Muhammad is false. Uh, okay. Christian Prince and official. <laughs> yeah, by the way, uh, uh, you remind me. There's some of you they are uh, they have in website uh, have my name in it. No problem. You can use that. It, you know, I understand. Like I, I saw dbtv.org, etc. But never claim that this is my website. All right. 
I don't have any website, even if it's great Islamic Shari, it is just a gift from somebody, I don't own it, you know. So don't claim that this is your website and don't claim to be official. And I, you know, I, I like your support, your people that uh, you take my videos, you make a website for them, that's wonderful. And in the same time, don't claim it is yours. I mean, the site is yours, yeah, but don't claim that you are Christian Prince. Because, you know, some people, they might take advantage of that or maybe collect the nation. Why no Christian country help Armenia? Well, this is a good question, uh, tree first. Uh, this is why, you see, I say that there's a problem, especially, let us say, let us make it simple. All those countries surrounding Turkey, they are Orthodox. Why the Orthodox churches don't meet and support Armenia? And see how they can what they can do the answer is very simple because the devil divided you as simple as that i mean how in the world you see turkey will never dare actually to to be a threat to any look how many orthodox country around turkey actually all of them are orthodox all the way from ukraine romania greece Bulgaria, Serbia, you name it, Georgia, so Russia, but because you are not united. When you are not united, you are weak, as simple as that. So this is why I believe uniting the churches is power for good, to support the poor, not to be an enemy to anyone. This is why I am against seeing uh, Orthodox, Catholic, Protestant. I want to see Christians, all of us one church. But because we have leaders who care only for their leadership, they want to be leaders, they want to have a chair, you know? Everybody want to be a patriarch of a chair. They are not really following Christ. The same as the Caliphate of Muhammad. That's why Islam destroyed since the Caliphate time. Because you have people fighting over a chair, you know? Human being is greedy, and a human being, he want a chair. He don't want to serve God. Uh, <clears throat> I have a side on a Facebook called the Christian Friends. Okay. Thank you, my friend. No, no problem. You can use my videos, etc. But make it clear that this is not my website because people that might contact you think it's me, you know? Yeah, just make it a clear please anyway uh no i don't want to be a leader you know I, I know for me it's enough for me to say the truth and the truth will set you free the second you are free you're free to do what you, need, what you think is right you know for me i never dreamed to be a leader of anything uh because people who seek uh you know let us say their own glory they get only their own glory uh you know many years ago uh, a person he asked me why you don't use your real name you know that will give you more people to support you I said uh, you know I, I don't really care for uh, more let us say more fame I care for what is right and uh, I remember when uh, when a big Islamic organization in USA they complain about me and brother Osama uh, Dog. they knew my name they knew my real name because they made that uh, they make a report to the government uh, they said to me, it's an opportunity to, you know, to tell people your name, you know, I said, still, I don't want to, if, if the Muslims show it, it's okay, you know, they know it, no problem, at least I am not the one who is seeking it, the Lord, he says, when you give with the right hand, don't show with the left hand, All right, and uh, for me to be Christian Prince is way more blessing from being the real name of the same person, it's the same person, but being Christian Prince is way more blessing. Otherwise, I don't care. I mean, uh, people think that, uh, you know, we don't show our name because we are afraid. I mean, why would we be afraid? All those who they go with their face in YouTube, they are not more brave than me. Trust me, none of them. I don't go with my face. I don't look good. You know, if you see how I look like, well, none of you will be here watching me. Secondly, uh, uh, I don't really care for those things. 
and people they are exposing Islam all over the world. People saying things all over, cartoon, etc. People going TV. It, all days is over, and I live in USA. So use my website or make a website support me, but never claim to be me. Otherwise, that would be a fraud. You know what I mean? Uh, no, actually, I can't do that. But I'm afraid if I show my if if I open my camera now, do you know how many people will leave? Starting from Abbas, the first one who will leave. The chat room is Abbas. Abbas will say, oh boy, what is that? He will... Uh... <laughs> Otherwise, who care? <laughs> you know, uh, uh, David Wood, he eat the Quran. I mean, your name, I mean, we have tons of people making fun of Islam. Uh, nobody is afraid. I mean, afraid from what? Those who they are afraid of Islam, or let's say from um, something will happen, they are already weed out. Long time ago, I used to receive death threat every day. Is it most time they post a picture saying this is me? So if you know it's me, I mean, so well, okay, uh, how come they don't know who, it's, who I am? So uh, if this is me, uh, so people who you can scare, they are gone long time ago. A person who make books, he is not scared. It take you two hundred dollars to hire a lawyer, and he can find you who I am, where I live, etc. Two hundred dollars. Advice to Muslims: Go do it. <laughs> who care? <laughs> anyway, so uh, no, we don't. You know, we don't fear anyone. You see, because you see, uh, I, I will. I will be in trouble if I live in Pakistan, right? Uh, if I live in Islamic country. But here, those those people, they have no place to be a threat. And if they try, they will pay the price. Actually, do you remember the guy, even the one, the, 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 even when they do killing, the one who do the Shar, Shar Abdul, uh, the newspaper, the comedy, when, when they kill them, do you know how much support those who they are fighting Islam they got because of the cartoon? Before nobody cared for the cartoon. It's the same as uh, the the book of uh, Salman Rushdie. Salman Rushdie he made a book. Nobody even buy it. Nobody knows about it. It's on the shelf. Nobody touch it. He don't even have like two hundred uh, two hundred people uh, sales in the first maybe a week. Then the Muslims they made a strike. Allahu Akbar Takbir. And then people woke up in the morning. They found in the news that millions of Muslims in Iran striking against Salman Rushdie. Millions. The book was bought by every single citizen in Europe. Became one of the most famous books in the world. You remember? And Salman Rushdie became Sir. The Queen of England, she called him Sir. She gave him a title. So look how they help him. So even when you make a threat, etc., it's it help. It's not the opposite. It worked for our benefit. It's always worked for our benefit. And you know, people will die anyway. I mean, you die, you die by a terrorist. Uh, people they were buying buying stuff in the Christmas, and then a guy who was a terrorist, he drive his car, he go over them. So which one is better? To die fighting for a truth, and you're a believer, or somebody? is a coward, he think he's safe from the terrorist, but then he die in the Christmas shopping. Fear no death. Those who fear death, they never have a life. If you fear death, you cannot go in the highway because a high number of people who go in the highway never come back. In case you do not know. If you fear death, never drive. If you fear death, never go in an airplane. There's Corona, there's airplane might crash, there's you name it. So if you have a fear, you will never enjoy life. You are dead already. Those who live in fear, they are dead. I have no fear. And this is why I enjoy every second of my life. I don't care. You know, people that threaten me, I love. If you, if you are a man, come and do it. If you are a man, come and do what you, what, what you, what you claim you can do. Uh, People have phobia as an example. Some people they have a phobia from dirt. They have to wash their pillow 
they have to change their po uh, pillow every morning. I mean, what kind of life this life is? You are, you are afraid every morning you have to change the pillow. What happened in the pillow in the night? Because he's afraid of some germs. He have to change his, his, uh, his, uh, his uh, you know, I mean, he cannot, he cannot live like this. A person who have a phobia, we have no phobia. You see, when, when they speak about Islamophobia as an example, this is a title created to make you look bad, supposedly. But the fact, those who use the word Islamophobic are the one who is scared of Islam, not us. We are not scared of Islam, that's why we are fighting it. We stand against it. The one who use the title of Islamophobic are the one is scared from Islam. But yet they use the title because they are hypocrite. Why we have to be checking security before we go in an airplane? Because of Islamophobia. <laughs> or because of terrorists. Why we have uh, to check everybody in the airport when he is coming? Why we have... Uh, uh, you know, to check his visa, what he do, why we have to watch millions of transactions of money around the world. Is it, is, is it Islamophobia or this is a true threat? So here you see the hypocrisy. All those countries who use the term Islamophobic, they are watching Islamic terrorists closely. They have tens of thousands of agents watching terrorists. So who is the one have a phobia? Unless the risk, the risk is it true. You know what I mean? The one who is using the name Christian Prince, my friend, change it. Don't use a Christian Prince. I will block you. This is the last warning. We do not need an official and official. Here we go. I did hide you. I don't like kids talk. What Christian Prince and official, official? What is that? If you come here, you call yourself Mimi Hijab, I will block you too. Don't use names of other people. Uh, come on, CP, you know you are not brave. Look, even fraud. The poll went public in public and is stopping you to come out in public unless you are not claim yourself. What poll? I am in public, you idiot. This is the biggest public forum. Millions of people are watching and listening. What what public? What poll? The poll? Poll? Like poll? Or like poll? Went in public. Uh, hmm. We are in public and when you call me, you are recorded and everybody is laughing at you and you became the joke of everybody. If we search right now, Abbas Christian Prince, how many videos will we find on YouTube? Endless. I challenge you, Abbas, to download them, all of them, and post them in the channel you make. If you are, if you are saying you stop me, correct, guys. If those people are proud about what they say to me and they respond to me, why Abbas don't download all the videos which is all already in the internet, make a channel, call it Abbas vs Christian Prince, and let everybody hear what you said. <laughs> And by the way, I go in public, you idiot. I do seminars. I did seminars in many countries. I go in person, not like here. So what do you mean in person? When I went, you know that there is, there is a city, it's called Marawi. Let's go to the Philippines, hold on. This is, the, this is the, the center of Islamic terrorist. This is where ISIS, they took the city. Who said I am afraid of any, anyone? Otherwise, I will never go to a, I will not go to a, a, a cities or countries. Many, anyone can get in. It says the sign outside the Christian Prince. Seminar. Uh, when, you are, when I arrive to the city, the first thing you see in the city, in the mosque, Let us see. You will see in the corner a mosque. I look like they have a new, a new mosque now. A new, uh, new, a new airport, bigger airport. No, actually the same. Yeah, when you are leaving the airport, you will find right away, you will see it's a small, tiny airport. The first thing you see, it's a mosque. Everybody in the airport is a Muslim. The one who check your ticket, the one who the security, all of them. 
I went to that city in Cagayan de Oro and I made a seminar and thousands of people were there, including Muslims. So who said we are not there? You speak 90%, doesn't matter. 10% of you is equal to a disaster. You are the same as Muhammad when he speaks for 10%. Let me, uh, Abbas, let me tell you, you are close to who? Let me show you. <clears throat> All right. If you remember, there's a hadith. Let me buy. Let me get. This is, this is how I see Abbas. When a blind man, he come to visit Muhammad. His name is Ibn Imukathum. Muhammad, he said to them, hide, 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 put your hijab. Mm -hmm. The wife of Muhammad, she said, but he is blind and he cannot see us. <laughs> he is blind and he cannot see us, Abdul. This is how I see you, Abbas. You are the same as your prophet. I never look at you as a, as a smart person. I look at you as a poor person. I feel, I feel sorry for you. I don't hate you. I will never hate you. I believe you are a good person from a good family. I believe your mother is a good woman, you know. And, you know, I can tell because, you know, the way you talk, you are not really a filthy person. Uh, but this is how I see you, and I'm being honest with you. You are a poor person with low IQ, like your prophet. Look at this. This is Sahih Hadith. And we can go and we can see all the reference. When the blind man, he come to Muhammad, and Muhammad, he said to them, hide yourself, cover yourself. The wives, they said to him, read carefully, that the man, uh, uh, that Ummu Salama narrated to him, that she and uh, Maymuna were in, with the messenger. Those are the wives of Muhammad, supposedly. So when we were with him, Ibn Ammu Maktoum came, and he entered upon him. And that was after veiling had been ordered for us. So the messenger of Allah said, veil yourself from him. Uh -huh. Okay, now for the one who do not know that this guy is a blind, he will say, okay, what's a big deal? Look what he said, look what the women said. So I said, oh, messenger of Allah, isn't he blind? Such that he cannot see us or recognize us? <laughs> and then Muhammad he got busted he had to get an answer for this his wives are smarter than him the fool he got exposed so what he said are you blind too read carefully are you blind too but in Islam woman she cover herself still she can see the man any Muslim will tell you that so what do you mean, are you blind too? And if they cover themselves, how that fix anything? Did they not cover the man? I mean, do you, guys, do you, do, you, do, you, do you know what I'm talking about? They cover themselves. Did they cover the man? I mean, okay, they can see now. So he cannot see, they can see. So he's ordered them to cover themselves in order not to see what? This is how I see you, Mr. Abbas. You are a foolish person like your prophet. Are you blind too? If you ask Abbas with my respect to his wife, do your wife wear hijab? He will say yes, I'm assuming. Can she see men in the street? He will say yes. If people come to your house, can she see them? He say yes. Okay, so what this is about? Stupid.
This is how I see every single one of you who defend Islam. If this is not enough proof that Muhammad is a fool, then you tell me what is foolishness. And I see I'm not speaking negative about, about Abbas. I'm, I don't believe, really, I don't believe that he's a bad person. Honestly, I don't believe, you know, unless he convinced me he's bad. You know, he never did something bad. I mean, this guy is that defend Islam and he's a poor guy, you know. I believe, as I said, he's coming from a good family. I believe his mother, she is a good woman. She have, a, you know, a son who is not faithy. Uh, because, you know, uh, the, the tree is really the good tree give bad fruits, you know. So he, he's coming from a good tree. But still, that will not make you smart, Abbas. I can't say you are smart. Why the woman, she have to cover herself? The guy is a blind. So? So when you talk to me, you say you cannot go in, I am in public, my friend. I go in public, I make seminar. How many videos I made before saying, guys, if you want to invite me to your church. And in church, when you invite, the door is open, anyone can come in. How many of you were following me for many years, saying, if you want to invite me to your church, I'm willing to go. Actually, just last year, a, 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 a friend from Pakistan, he invited me to a church, two churches. One is Pakistani church and one is a mega church. I don't know if he's here. A huge church. I made a seminar and the church door is open. And actually, not only that, that church is hosting Muslim refugee in the church coming from Syria. The day I arrived there, they were talking and they have a, the, the week before they have a big lunch for those refugee. They, all of them they are Muslims. So the church is full of Muslims. And I did this seminar in the church. So you are mistaken, Abbas. Anyway, uh, if there is any women here, please cover your head because we, I, I have a blind next to me. I have uh, I have a blind man next to me, and he's dangerous. Hey. Husband, isn't it him blind? He cannot see us, neither recognize us. The guy, he cannot see us. He cannot recognize us. So you order them to cover themselves by what? What for? Hmm? You tell me. And you know, if this story is made by Christians, you can say, okay, this is fabricated story made by the Christians. As you see, the one who witnessed for this is first-hand witness, the wives of Muhammad. Two wives of Muhammad witnessing that the Prophet ordered them to cover themselves when a blind man is coming. So what is the purpose of the hijab in Islam then? To make the women blind too? Are we going to blind them? This is, can be acceptable if Muslims believe that women eyes cannot see anything except women. That can be, ex but as long as Muslim women, they can see men, they can still use their eyes, then this story here is stupid. And the one who come with it is stupid. Otherwise, you tell me what is the, what is the purpose of this story? <clears throat> So this is how I see the response of Abbas to me when he respond. And this is the response of all Muslims. And by the way, I'm going to take some time. I'm, I'm thinking to make like uh, maybe once or twice a week live podcast. So I can go back and do my work in my books. All right. Uh, so keep record of people. So what? No, no, my friend. You see... Uh, when you say uh, don't reveal etc that is not really I mean if all of us we do what they think they can scare us with then they are winners no how many people they can track and let them track so what <clears throat> uh, my friend I am not the person who can be intimidated and the one who tried to intimidate me good luck for him as simple as that 
never never bow down to the cowards never doesn't matter actually i am the kind if you intimidate me i do more or if you try to intimidate me i do more i do the opposite and this is, goes for anything it's even normal things in life you know if somebody tried to force things on me i do the opposite this is not uh, about even even with family you know if somebody tried to force something on me like even with my dad you want me to study something i study something else I'm not going to do what you want. It's my life. Never try to intimidate me. Never try. You say to me, I'm not going to support you. I'm not going to pay for your school. No problem. I'm a man. I will support myself, even though I was a kid. So, <clears throat> I can do one live stream whilst you are writing a chapter. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Ibn Shihab is not trustworthy. Guys, Ibn Shihab not trustworthy. Abbas, he went for a, he took a nap. Guys, he took a nap. Ibn Shihab, is, okay, here we go. Let me show you. Let me show you how, how foolish you are. Read. وَقَالَ أَبْوَ عِيسَى هَذَا حَدِيثٌ حَسَنٌ صَحِيحٌ Hassan, it is good and authentic. Not only authentic, not only it is it's good and authentic. Do you see it? قال ابن عيسى هذا حديث حسن صحيح. So what you will say now? That that's it. You know, Abbas, 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 he went took a nap for like last twenty minutes, and he come. This guy is a liar. First of all, if he's a liar, why you put him there? Secondly, you eat it. The if is accepted. It's not rejected. This is why it's called Daif. However, this one is not Daif. This is in the And if we translate the two sides of the page, <clears throat> let us see. We need to use Google Translation and Google Browser. So if we use the Google translation, unknown. <clears throat> okay, hold on. <coughs> uh, translate the language into, no, hold on. Into English. All right. Well, for some reason, the, the Google translation, I'm trying to find a known language. <clears throat> Choose another language. Arabic. Okay. Translating the two side of a, for some reason, it keeps showing me unknown. When I try to change the, you see here, Anyway, I can post the link for you and you can take, actually, let us do this. Hold on. I will copy the text in front of all of you. Hold on. Give me a second. Let me open Google Translation. <clears throat> Google Translation. All right. So this is Google Translation, Abbas. Let us open the screen and I will show everybody. We will copy paste in the front of your eyes. And you will see that this hadith, it says Sahih and Hassan. So this is the hadith. I will copy it in Arabic. I will copy the last part. Copy. We paste in Google. Here we go. Uh, I mean, what's wrong with Google? Can't recognize languages. Here you go. Abu Isa said, "This is good, authentic hadith." <laughs> Are you there, Abbas? So the game of weak hadith is not working.
the game of weak hadith is not it's not working it is it says this is a, a sahih hadith as simple as that so what we would do now anyway guys it's time to go i want to say thank you for being here may the lord bless you and with this if you have a wife and a blind man he's coming to your house please be sure that she hide herself cover herself because she can see him still that is the intelligence of muhammad thank you god bless you christ is lord and see you soon again bye bye